Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be filming a declutter. I haven't done a declutter since I think January this year. I tend to do these about once every six months. And I've just accumulated a few fragrances that either I just didn't like from the beginning because they were blind buys and I got it wrong, or they are fragrances that I just haven't really been reaching for that I've had in my collection a while that I've just decided I want to get rid of. My collection is currently at around 119 fragrances and I'd really like to reduce that because I feel like I've been buying quite a lot of fragrances recently and I just want to sort of get some room back basically and some money back too. So if you like this kind of content then please do consider subscribing if you haven't done already and also please like this video if you do end up liking this video. So what's the first fragrance? So the first fragrance is one from Kayali and it's called Eden Juicy Apple 01. So I won this fragrance last year in a giveaway, I think around sort of April, May time. And I really didn't like this one very much from the outset. And I've been trying it a little bit this week and trying to decide whether I want to keep it. And I've just come to the conclusion that I probably won't ever wear it. But actually retrying it, it's really not, not a bad fragrance at all. I think if you like really sweet, really fruity fragrances, this really could be a very nice one. So this initially is, is an apple fragrance and that's really the major problem I have with this one. I, I've just learned in fragrance that I don't particularly enjoy apple notes and, and this is no exception. So this opens with apple and raspberry and it also, as it dries down, it begins to smell a little bit like a strawberry fragrance to me, a strawberry apple fragrance. As it dries down further, you get some laundry musk. You also get sort of toffee apple kind of smells from this. It's very sort of sweet and, and sickly almost to me. I think this fragrance is just very, very sweet. And I think that's what I struggle with along with the apple and that combination with the raspberry or strawberry or whatever berry notes there are in this. I think as well, you know, this, this fragrance was aiming to be designed to reflect sort of American culture in the 90s. And I think they've really achieved that. I do think that this fragrance really makes me think of, of the time when I was at school. It makes me feel like it's a very young smelling fragrance in a way. Um, it, it really does take me back to Britney and whatever else Mona was inspired by to make this one. I think, you know, now I'm nearing 40, this is not necessarily how I want to smell. But, you know, good on you if you do want to smell like this. I think it is a fun one and I think it's uplifting and I'm just really sorry that I don't particularly like this on me but I think it could smell really good on somebody else. So that's Eden Juicy Apple 01 by Kayali. So if you watch my channel already then this really won't be a surprise to you. I'm actually going to get rid of seven Shea and Blue fragrances that I bought in gift sets and these are 10 mil fragrances and I reviewed them in quite an extensive review video and I basically came to the conclusion that I didn't really enjoy any of them. And I ranked them in the end. And I do have one that I bought ages and ages ago called White Peaches. And I've kept that one. But the rest of them are going. And actually, there's one already missing from one of these gift sets. And that was Black Tulip. And that one I decluttered back in January because I just knew that I absolutely hated that one because I just found it cloying. But these other ones that are going are Blood Oranges, Atropa Belladonna, English cherry blossom, which I particularly disliked. That one just smelt like, oh, just a broxen to me. And then Framboise Noir is also going. Um, and then from this other gift set, Kingswood is going. That one to me smelt a lot like urine. If you want a fragrance that smells of urine, go for Kingswood. Um, and there's also Oud Leaf and Black's Club Leather that I'm getting rid of. These two were probably the better two from the entire range of fragrances that I tried. But I still think that I've got better leather fragrances. I've got better oud fragrances in my collection. So these are going. These are only 10 mil fragrances. I could very easily and probably very quickly use them up. But if you don't enjoy something, what's the point? You know, it's life's too short for a bad perfume day, isn't it? So yeah, these are going. They're not going to bring me any joy. So yeah, I'm really sad about Shea and Blue. But I don't think a brand has ever disappointed me more. And, and that's that's just not really what you want to say about a brand, is it? So... Yeah, that's why those are going. So this next fragrance I've been hanging on to, I think I've had this one since 2020. And I think the reason I've been hanging on to it is because it's in a gorgeous bottle and I just really like the bottle, but I need the space. I keep all of my fragrances on the top of a chest of drawers and that chest of drawers is completely full at the moment. So I'm just, I'm being a bit, a bit more ruthless. 
So this fragrance is Bon Bon by Victor Rolf. You can see why I keep it for the bottle. It is a gorgeous bottle, but you know, I'm never reaching for this fragrance. So why am I keeping it? It's ridiculous really, isn't it? So this fragrance I think is famous for being one of the first designer fragrances to use the Caramel Accord. That's really, you know, what it's based on. It's based on indulgence and, and being addicted to those kind of sweet notes. And I think I'm just not one of those people who gravitate towards those sweet notes, actually. So this one is just a very super screechy, very artificial, very synthetic smelling caramel. The caramel here just does not translate from real life. If you put a caramel cheesecake in front of me, I would be all over it. But the caramel in fragrance for me just doesn't normally translate. And this is just no exception. This fragrance also has peach and peach is also something that I really struggle with, especially if it's a warm peach. This is definitely a warm peach. I think this is a 90 ml bottle and actually the fragrance is down to here. So it's had, it's had a good life. You know, I've used, I've used quite a significant proportion of it, but it's just not something I reach for anymore. I think when I first started out, I was a little bit more into these kind of super sweet gourmand fragrances and really my taste has just dramatically changed. So that's Bon Bon by Victor and Rolf. So this next fragrance is a really inexpensive one and it's one that I bought because I wanted to try something from the brand. People talk about this brand and say that it's a really good cheap brand, inexpensive, affordable brand. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just try one. And there are aspects of this that I really enjoy and then aspects of it that I really don't enjoy. So this one is Ghost Deep Night. It comes in this beautiful crescent moon bottle. I really like the bottle. And actually this fragrance, I think the problem with it for me is again, that it's a peachy fragrance. So yeah, I don't know why I bought this because I did clock the notes and I did think to myself, oh, peach, I might not like this. And yeah, I don't like this. But I just, I thought maybe it might be a fresh peach, but yeah, it's not. So the thing I like about this one is that it's got a really strong muskiness and the muskiness is there from really the first spray. And that almost saves it for me. I have really considered whether to keep this one or not, actually. It's been something that I think really just ultimately makes me a little bit nauseous when I spray this. Um, after I've been wearing it a few minutes, it just sort of turns my stomach a little bit. And again, I think it's the peach. But this does have elements in it that I do really like. So it's kind of like a powdery, powdery, woody vanilla kind of fragrance, but with this really strong muskiness underneath it all. I think, yeah, it's just that sort of synthetic peach, that warm peach that I just don't get on with. But it does last a long time and it does it does project for a little bit, but it's mainly a skin scent. But it's so inexpensive, this fragrance, I don't think anybody would mind overspraying it. And I think, you know, if you did overspray it, especially on clothes, you probably would get more projection. I wouldn't hesitate to recommend this one to anyone who didn't have a problem with peach in fragrance. I think this is actually probably quite a good fragrance especially for the price point. So that's Ghost Deep Night, just not for me. So the next fragrance is one from Floris and it's called White Rose. So Floris is a brand that I already own one fragrance from and I've tried a few other fragrances and I've just really liked their fragrances. I really like their aesthetic. I really like, you know, their history. And I was just intrigued by this one because it's meant to be Queen Elizabeth II's wedding fragrance from 1947. And this fragrance is actually a lot older than that even. This fragrance was released first of all in 1800. And that just really intrigued me. I wanted to smell it. So this one, you know, with a name like White Rose, what are you going to imagine? I personally imagine something that was quite powdery, something that was quite transparent, something that was quite veil-like, even something that's maybe creamy in a rose kind of fragrance. But that isn't what this fragrance is like. So when I first sprayed this, it sounds weird, but it really made me think of beef dripping. It made me think of a, a Sunday lunch. You've cooked a roast beef joint and, you know, all of the juices and all of the fats have kind of congealed in the bottom and sort of made some kind of consistency, almost like bovril or marmite in the bottom of the pan. And, you know, it's that kind of dry meaty smell and I think that was really the carnation and the iris and the violet in this fragrance so actually the second time I tried this I didn't really get that beef dripping smell at all but I kind of see where I was coming from so I think it's the carnation so for me this fragrance is definitely more on the powdery side it's definitely more iris violet and carnation and even slightly spicy really for me 
rather than a rose fragrance, especially in the dry down. As this dries down as well, it becomes a little bit soapy almost, which I think a lot of fragrances of this era probably are a little bit soapy. So I'm not really surprised by that. But yeah, it, it's something that I think I bought in a kind of an idea of making a Royal Fragrances video, something to do with Royal Weddings maybe. And it's something that I'm not sure that I have the time, effort or money to spend on those fragrances to then be able to try them all, to then talk about them in a video. But this one was really not for me, but I kind of see that it is a little bit weddingy. It's kind of got a lightness and an airiness about it, but... Yeah, I think that first beef dripping shock was, was, was the thing that really put me off this one. So that's some um, Floris White Rose. So the final fragrance is another rose fragrance and it's just one that I haven't got on with and I really thought that I might like. And the reason I bought this is because it's a Miller Harris fragrance and generally I quite like Miller Harris fragrances and I just thought that I would enjoy this one but it's just not for me. So this is called Rose on Noir. So even the name of this rose in the dark or rose in black you know that just attracts me it makes me think that I'm going to like this fragrance but yeah rose on noir is, is really not for me and really this was a bit of a saga this fragrance because I remember seeing it in TK Maxx and the packaging was slightly open you know how they put it in those kind of plasticky tubs and I can kind of squeeze the plasticky tub and smell the fragrance through the packaging and I put it down again because I thought oh well, I'm not sure that's for me but then what did I do? I went out and bought this fragrance. So yeah, I've got no sense basically. I just really had this strong desire to own it because it has rose, it has tobacco and it's called Rose on Noir. And I just thought that I would really enjoy this fragrance just from the notes that it has and, and how it sounds. I just thought that a dark rose was me. But this really is more of a powdery rose and I think that's really why I don't get on with this one. So the main problem for me with this fragrance really is that it's, the rose here is very light. It's very pink. It's very sort of soapy almost. It's something that you would definitely smell in, in some kind of floral soap. It's also got a pepperiness but I don't think this is anything that I would ever dare to describe as a dark rose. It really makes me think of potpourri. It's kind of dusty smelling. And I think that might be the tobacco in this fragrance. So the tobacco here is not honeyed, it's not golden, it's not sunshiny. It's very much something that's more dusty. And dusty tobacco doesn't really do it for me. This fragrance also has cumin. And I think that really contributes to that dusty feeling. And it's not exactly sweaty, but it's definitely something that I don't really enjoy in this fragrance. As this dries down, you do get a bit of violet leaf. And that really improves the fragrance for me, but it just doesn't save it there's still that sort of dusty feeling tobacco in the dry down and that's really what puts me off this one. I think ultimately if I didn't know that tobacco was listed I wouldn't ever identify it. It's something that's just yeah it just smells kind of ashy and not like something that I have ever smelt in a in a tobacco fragrance before. I guess I've always smelt very sweet tobacco fragrances and this isn't really a, a sweet tobacco fragrance. It's not something that's that's very dark or resinous. It's something that's very much a very dry kind of tobacco fragrance. Actually trying this fragrance, it does last quite well on skin and it does project quite well as well. It does quieten down after a few hours, but you know, most fragrances do. I just can't see me ever reaching for this. I can't see me ever wanting to smell like a dusty potpourri kind of rose. So this one is going. So that's Rose on Noir by Miller Harris. So that's the final fragrance in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And please let me know, have you tried any of these fragrances in this declutter video? Are there any fragrances in your own collections that you're not getting along with? I'd be really interested to know and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.